Mark Rice Oxley um, over from London for the day to um, do a presentation to the Isborne. Yeah, well, when I was first told I was suffering from depression, I was completely appalled. You know, I had, I thought I'd be the last person in the world to suffer from depression. I had no real inkling of what it was about. Depression for me was for for sad, broken people who came from troubled homes or troubled childhoods or troubled countries. I had the the sweetest, nicest upbringing you could imagine. So well, what did I have to be depressed about? And what was going on there was that I just didn't understand. that Suffering from depression is very different from just being a bit depressed. I mean, we all get a little bit depressed. When you're diagnosed with clinical depression, it's a doctor telling you that there's something seriously wrong um, with your brain. Um, and it takes a while to get used to that. So I think for, for people who are out there now who are confronting this for the first time, don't get put off by definitions and don't necessarily get put off by diagnoses. All that's happening is you're being told by a medical professional, pro prof professional that there's something profoundly wrong with your brain. You'll probably recover, most of us do. Um, you have a serious condition um, and it will take quite a bit of figuring out how to get well, but you almost certainly will get well. Yeah, so it took me a long time to realise that I was suffering from depression. And many, many months of slowly building symptoms, a headache that I'd never had before, a lethargy, apathy, lack of enthusiasm, the things that I used to love, which I no longer found a great deal of joy in anymore. Um, and one by one, these kind of symptoms and phenomena sort of crowded in um, till I got to the point where I was having panic attacks and was terrified of being in public. Um, and that was the moment at which I knew something was seriously wrong. Yeah, so I think part of the therapeutic process is to find out um, what's gone wrong. Um, and a lot of what goes wrong with clinical depression is in the way that we think. Um, now, I didn't think that I necessarily was the kind of person who succumbed to catastrophic thinking before I... Uh, suffered from depression. But looking back, I definitely did. Um, there's all kinds of impulses where we have a thought and that triggers an emotion and that emotion triggers a behaviour which then sets in train another thought and before you know where you are, you are chasing your tail around in ever-decreasing circles of sort of thought, ter terrifying thoughts um, which just make things worse. So in order to try and come to grips with that, get to grips with that, um, I was told to go away and really observe this and try and be curious, try and observe your thoughts rather than buying into them. Try and see them as um, something akin to a, a film being projected onto the silver screen of your mind rather than an objective reality in themselves. And it's really hard to do because we, we've been brought up to think of our thinking as objective truth. It's what we do. We are homo sapiens, literally thinking man. But there are times when the thinking isn't helpful, particularly when you're catastrophizing. And that's when it becomes useful if you can learn some of these techniques which enable you to detach yourself a bit from negative thoughts and to see them as just really the propaganda of clinical depression and propaganda that it's really not worth buying into. There's been a lot of conjecture about what the cause of depression is. And I have a theory, and I'm not a scientist, but my theory is that a lot of it these days is wrapped up in our extremely high expectations of ourselves and our lives, our families and our world and our place in it. I think that we have these the implausible ideas of, uh, of perfection and in chasing after it, um, we do ourselves damage. We kind of have to overdose on stress and adrenaline in order to attain these extremely high standards that we see in our newspapers and on our televisions and in our game shows and in our sports stars. Um, and I think that we need to relearn the art of decompression, the art of doing something as an end in itself, not a means to an end. Um, otherwise, I think the problem with stress is that it, it's an ancient instincts that obviously came from, that obviously protected uh, Homo sapiens a million years ago when the dangers were few and far between. Now we've got our stress hormones flushing through our system the whole time and we just simply don't know 
what the long-term effect of that is. But I suspect that there's a connection between those very high stress levels and the very high levels of clinical depression today.